Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and we're taking a look today at the GameSir T1S. This is a, a pretty affordable controller at $39 that is compatible with Windows and Android, but not Mac or iOS. Uh, and it's got a bunch of different ways you can connect it up with your Windows computer as well. We'll be covering uh, all of that here in just a second. Now, I do want to mention in the interest of full disclosure, this came in free of charge from GameSir. However, all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review and no one is reviewing this content before it is posted. They've modeled it after a PS4 controller, so you get the same button layout as you might see on one of those PS4 devices, but you can also get a Xbox-inspired version here called the G4S. This sells for about $49, a little bit more expensive, uh, which has the Xbox layout to it. It's also a little heavier than uh, this one is. Uh, the directional pad is my only big gripe with this controller. It doesn't give you a lot of feedback when you're uh, moving back and forth very quickly, so if you're trying to do a quick left-to-right kind of maneuver, uh, you're not going to feel any tactile uh, response to your thumb moving on it. So when you're pushing down on one end, the whole uh, rocker here kind of gets pushed down. So that was my uh, big gripe with this, uh, with this controller is the gamepad on it. Uh, there's also a bit of a dead zone between the left and the right as you're uh, sliding your thumb across. So that was a uh, bit of an issue, I think, for classic gaming in particular, especially if you're using some games that require a lot of uh, quick movement here. That was my big gripe with that. The buttons aren't bad. They're a little spongy, but uh, they are responsive and decent. Uh, the, th the thumbsticks actually are really good, very, very sensitive. You'll be seeing some uh, examples of that in a little bit uh, when I get into some of the uh, gameplay testing we'll be getting to in a little while. On the back here, you've got two uh, button triggers and you've got two analog triggers and they have some resistance to them. They actually feel really nice and you can very finely control uh, the amount of input that you're sending to your computer or device with these. So I was really uh, impressed with how all of that works. There's a battery built in. You should be able to get 20 or 30 hours of gameplay on it. Uh, you charge it here via USB. It also has two rumble motors inside as well. So if you are playing on a PC that supports rumble, it'll do all the rumbling that an Xbox controller might, but uh, you'll be paying a little bit less and getting some additional compatibility. So let's talk about compatibility. Uh, you can plug it into your computer with USB. That will also charge it, but it will also have the controller uh, connect as an X input controller, which is uh, what you would normally uh, get for an Xbox controller. So anything compatible with an Xbox controller will work with this one. And you see here, there's a bit of a bracket that comes out from the middle. And the reason is, is that you can also uh, connect this up with your Android device via Bluetooth. So you can put your phone uh, inside the controller's bracket here and a uh, game on the road with it, which is pretty cool. You can just switch it into Bluetooth mode to do that. You can connect up with Bluetooth to the PC also, but uh, the Bluetooth mode is not uh, X input compatible. But the way they solved that was to give a, a little dongle in the package here that kind of just uh, stores itself in the bottom of the controller. You plug this into your PC and uh, you can then get a wireless X input connection uh, back to your computer if you don't want to plug in directly with it. So a lot of different ways to connect up with your devices, which is uh, really cool. And I like the fact that everything is contained within the controller here. So there's no separate bracket. Uh, it just folds on down and it stays with you all the time. And you can also store that dongle, which you will always lose if, it, if you couldn't store it in here, uh, right inside uh, the controller. So it is always with you as well. So that's the basics of the controller. Let's take a look now and see how it performs. All right, so we're going to start off with a uh, tester that I downloaded called the Game Controller Tester. It's a free app from the uh, Windows App Store. It's really pretty useful, actually. If you haven't tried it, go get it. It's really cool to test out your controllers with. And you can see here just how sensitive this uh, stick is here. So just a little bit of movement uh, gets that cursor going there. So that's really good to see. If you're looking for sensitivity, you'll probably find it here. Uh, you can see here as I move around here, you've got a full uh, 360 degrees of motion. Uh, this app does lock the cursor as you move to the up, down, left, right position as you're moving things around. So this is something that uh, I found that my Xbox controller was doing also with this app, but um, it is uh, functioning as well as my Xbox controller does, at least as far as those sticks are concerned. Uh, you can see here also with the right stick, it is also very sensitive and you've got the full range of motion on that one as well. I also wanted to show you the triggers too, because that resistance that it uh, pushes back with you on uh, does give you some ability to very finely control uh, the output that you're trying to get in your game. So you can see here, I've got a lot of fine movement and there's no locking mechanism to it. It's just giving me a little bit of resistance that allows me to more, uh, more uh, I guess, uh, granularly control the, uh, the analog response to this. A really nice feel to these triggers as well. All right, so let's take a look at a real world example now. We've got Grand Theft Auto 5 running on my laptop or connecting wirelessly via its 2.4 gigahertz dongle that it comes with. And of course, we've got the X input controls working here. So you can get a feel for uh, how the camera <laughs> works here. Now that we got run over by a very uh, discourteous driver uh, and you can see how all that works. So decent uh, sensitivity on the camera and you can see you've got a full range of motion here also. So that works pretty nicely. Uh, so no problems on that stick. And you can see here on the left stick when we start walking, 
Uh, you get a lot of control here, so you can get them going really slowly, and then you've got all this room here to play with on that stick also, so not bad. Uh, we'll get them running here, and we'll do a quick jump so you can see how the latency is in-game, and I'll pull up the menu here also so you can get a feel for uh, a little bit more of a snappier kind of uh, activity here. So we'll go over to settings and hit the button, and again, you can see what the latency is uh, with the wireless dongle. If you are noticing latency, I'm not seeing much, uh, you can plug it in directly, and that will, of course, give you a, a better experience because you're connected via the wire versus using uh, a wireless connection in between the controller and computer. So that's the Windows performance. Let's take a look now at Android. All right, so here we are playing Sonic the Hedgehog in emulation on my Android device here. And uh, we are now connected up via Bluetooth because that is how you connect to Android devices with this particular device. And as you can see here, we're getting a little bit of input lag. It feels just a little bit off to me. That's why I like to use Sonic the Hedgehog in these demos because I'm so used to the game and I know how it should feel. And this feels like there's a bit of a delay between the time that I push the button and uh, Sonic actually jumps. So uh, just bear that in mind as you are uh, making your buying decisions here. That Bluetooth will introduce a little bit of lag that you might not see uh, on the Windows side of things with that dongle plugged in. So that is one thing uh, I found with that. But otherwise, it seems to be working pretty decently. Uh, down here, you can see there's a few different modes that you can connect up with. And right now, it's in the Android mode, as you can see. Uh, the X input mode was what we were on before. Uh, but there's also a mouse icon and an Apple icon on there. So the mouse icon allows you to emulate a mouse. Uh, if you wanted to do that, you can just switch it into that mode when you turn the controller on. And via Bluetooth, you can uh, have this act as a mouse. Uh, the Apple mode is a little deceiving because it will work with the older iCade protocol that uh, was on iOS. There's a bunch of older games that support that protocol, but all the new ones don't. So if you have an Apple TV or you have an iPhone an I or an iPad, uh, you will not get any compatibility with the new stuff controller. They've got one they will sell you for that, about 100 bucks, a lot more money, unfortunately. But uh, this one really is not an Apple device. It doesn't work well on the Mac either. I tried to connect it up any which way I possibly could. Uh, nothing worked at all. So uh, I'm not going to recommend this for Mac users either. But for Windows and Android, I think it's a pretty good value. It's not perfect. Again, I'm really, I have an issue with that gamepad there. But uh, beyond that, I think it's a pretty decent value, especially because you get the bracket built in, you get the little dongle for uh, getting better wireless speeds back to your Windows device. And you also have the option to connect up directly as well. They really just thought of a lot of things. And what's been fun about these controllers, because I've been looking at them now for the last year or so, is that they keep getting better. They've been incrementally improving them. Uh, and this is certainly an example of that. And they've been listening to uh, reviewers like me and customers who have been uh, suggesting things. And they turn around those changes pretty quickly. So uh, all in a good value for $39. And that is the uh, GameSir T1S. And this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.